We're going to demonstrate basic splitting techniques using uh, feathers and wedges. And for those of you who don't know, there's these little guys here are, are the uh, feathers, and this obviously is the wedge. And um, it's a really quick, easy, efficient way of breaking a big piece of stone up into smaller pieces. And so I like using a hilti. It's a really good, it's a hammer drill. So when you put it on, when you put it on the stone, it, it bounces as well as spins. So you don't want, if you're breaking the stone like we're breaking it, you don't want your feathers parallel. You want them perpendicular, 90 degrees. Okay, does everybody understand that? And then you try to get your little wedge in there without dropping your feathers down in the hole. And you try to get your feathers down so they're sitting on the stone as deep down as you can get them. Okay. Like I said, limestone is usually pretty cooperative. actually see the stone split and you can hear it starting to split. You can tell sometimes by the sound. You might as well go. So that was a nice that was a nice split. And we always scribe our lines on instead of just drawing them on because your pencil line goes away, but then we fill it in with a pencil. Just so you can set this thing and you can scribe your line across. A lot of times you want to just stand over it because it's kind of a pendulum type thing instead of when you're doing a lot of your carving, you're working like this. With pitching, it's kind of from the side or down below. And you kind of like what Mark was doing when he was scoring. You kind of basically, if you're, say you're wanting to take to pitch off a piece about this size, if you were that much taller, you'd walk around the whole block just pitching, pitching, pitching. Generally, you try to get down <clears throat> Pretty close to the line, but not dangerously close with a big crude tool like this. If you see um, buildings that have those kind of pillowed rough stone, that this is how they do it. And it's called pitch base finish, or they call it rock base. Rhythm. And when we were starting out, everybody kind of sounded like this. And then as you get a little bit used to this, you get that rhythm. And then as people get a little bit more experience, then you don't really hear, hear that double tap thing so much. Then you'd move into your punch, which really, um, I think, really, this is your most important tool because you're. Uh, it's the hardest tool to use, so nobody likes to use it. It's very unruly. It wants to go all over the place. People tend to hit their hands. But you're dealing strictly with form of whatever your sculpture is instead of getting into texture. The moment you start to get into flat chiseling, you know, this kind of stuff where you're starting to smooth things off, then you can just get caught up in just making, you know, the surface. You're just That's all you're dealing with. And, you can spend two days just kind of making a nice little smooth thing and you get a little rasp and you clean it up only to find in the end that your form is not very good and, you know it's not what you want you have to go back over all that work you've already done and kind of rework it so we've always kind of pushed people to um, use this as much as possible 
particularly in three-dimensional pieces where you just it goes quicker once you get used to it you're only dealing with form and uh, I actually think it makes it more interesting and the work goes that much faster because you're not moving into all the nitpicky tools so sometimes even for doing you know on the cathedral a gargoyle or a big face or something keeping it rough as long as possible really helps because then you're just using your finishing tools to just kind of clean it up. I don't know if some of you that are used to working with chisels, you you know that it starts to feel like <clears throat> sounds a little cliche, but an extension of your your body, and you can start to feel the stone. Where do you need to? hit hard and where you need to change your angle and all that. I don't know if any of you do it who've been carving, but that this kind of rhythm thing I, I really find aids me in any kind of carving. Even if I'm doing the planes of a face, uh, it, it makes, it's just a stabler way of doing it. If I, if I do this, then I find I'm, I'm undulating more, or if I kind of can lock in on this rhythm thing, then I'm, you can kind of see better what you're doing because you're pulling that chisel away and keeping an eye on it.